Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. I guess I'm going to call this a follow-up to my uh, Show Us Your 10 USA Made Lockback Knives. Now, in that video, I showed this one as my 10th uh, lockback, the uh, Shrades uh, Hunting and Fishing Knife that has this slide on the back that actually locks the blade when you get it open. You know, and then the blade is locked. Um, and in the, uh, I had mentioned also that I had two other five inch folding hunters that might be USA made. This one is uh, by Winchester and um, it does not say where it was made. So I suspect it was not made in the United States but I don't really know for sure. Uh, Winchester is notorious for doing that. The other one is um, by Colonial. This came in the Tuckerman sheath, I believe. And this is also a five inch lockback folding hunter style knife. And again, this one, uh, I know it was made in uh, uh, 19, I'm sorry, 2008. So 2008, it was made. Um, it is Mark Colonial, Providence, Rhode Island. And then you have that. And it says 448 stainless steel, but nowhere does it say it was made in the USA. Now, it might have been made in Colonial. Um, it may have been made in Providence, Rhode Island. It may have been made in the United States, but I don't know for certain. So I did not include that among my USA made knives but these were two buck clones that I own that are possibly USA made. I'm leaning more on this one being USA made and this one probably coming out of China. I just don't know for certain, uh, but this could have also been made in China. The reason I'm not sure about this colonial knife is because at the time it was rumored that uh, colonial was sending USA parts for knives to China having them uh, made in China, shipped back to the United States, reboxed, and then sold. Um, if it's true or not, I don't know. But that was the rumor going around that these knives were actually being made in China. And the ones that were made in China would have a little sticker on them that said China. Uh, but the sticker was easy to remove. So it's very possible that whoever sold me the knife removed the sticker, uh, and that's the problem. So I don't know if it was made in China or if it was made in the United States. The box clearly said it was made in the United States, and uh, the parts, in any case, would have been American parts, but it might have been assembled in China. I just don't know. I also don't know if that rumor is true. However, while scrounging around, I also uh, found some of my uh, lockback fish knives. And this was obviously not made in USA. This is uh, the Bill Dance Outdoors, and this is a frost cutlery knife. Uh, and it is clearly marked China. Big old, uh, this thing is, uh, I, I've, I've joked about this knife before. It is a decent enough fillet blade and everything going on it. But uh, it has a, um, a lanyard hold here, but when you close the blade, watch what happens. See the blade? It goes right through the lanyard hole. So, well, if you can get it to close, it'll go right through the lanyard hole. So kind of a silly design there. Uh, and then I found these other two knives here, and these are by Schrade. This is the MA5, um, and this was, uh, you see their shred cutlery. I love how they got the little serrated portion down there for cutting through the bone and stuff. But this is a fillet blade also. And the MA5, and first production run made in China. And then, um, I don't know how it slipped my mind, but I also have the MA6. And uh, this is a much better well, much better made knife than the MA5, uh, especially when it comes to a little uh, chamfering around the edges here. And you see there, Schrade USA MA6. So I did have a 10th 
Lockback USA made knife. It was my Schrade MA6 folding fillet knife. And uh, again, with the little serrated portion up there for cutting th off fins and bone and stuff like that. So yeah, I actually do have a 10th uh, a, a Lockback knife, my MA6. Um, <laughs> I wonder how many other knives are just hiding in the collection. I don't know. Looking back through my channel, I realized I really never talked about these two knives, the uh, Schrade MA5 and MA6, except when I was comparing them to this knife, the uh, Chicago Cutlery Traveler. And so I thought maybe this would be an opportunity to give a, a very brief history on these particular knives. Um, seeing how this is actually my 10th USA made lockback and it might have been the 10th one that I picked up. Now as you saw earlier this is the MA5 uh, the smaller version of the knife and this one is not made in the United States this is made in uh, in China it is uh, still by straight cutlery though and it is a first production run so i don't know if there was a second production run or not of the uh, ma5 in china but this knife like the ma6 um, began life as a usa made production knife um, in 1985 and they were made basically from 1985 to around 1989 when uh, schrade ceased production in the united states now, the MA portion of the name is because these are the Mighty Anglers. That's what the, uh, and there's only two knives in the Mighty Angler series, the MA5 and the MA6. Um, and don't be fooled by the names. Uh, simply because this is called the MA5, you might think that this is five inches closed. It is not. Uh, the closed length of this knife is almost six inches, right around five and seven eighths inches, something like that, maybe five and three quarters. Um, blade length also is not five inches. The length of the blade comes in right at uh, four and a quarter inches or so. That That is on the, um, the Chinese made one. According to uh, official records, the uh, MA5 is supposed to have a four and a half inch blade, but this one shows up at four and a quarter inches. There might be a little bit of a difference between the Chinese made and the uh, and the American made. As for the um, MA6, the overall length of it comes in right at six and three quarters, maybe six and seven eighths of an inch. And the length of the blade, the length of the blade is right there, almost five and three quarter inches long with a cutting edge that is five and a quarter inches. And you see the serrated portion up here, the serrated portion on this is almost a half an inch. Um, this is the chi uh, Chinese made version. Uh, the uh, serrated edge on there comes in right around three eighths of an inch. I do not know how long it is on the USA made version of the knife. Now, most people uh, say that the serrated portion here was for uh, removing fins and uh, and for cutting through bone and stuff like that for tougher uh, surfaces and stuff. According to Schrade, the official purpose of that serrated edge was to save the cutting blade, you know, your fillet blade, and use this serrated edge here uh, for cutting monofilament line and things of that na nature. So this is actually for cutting your uh, heavy duty fish line uh, so that you can save the rest of your blade for dealing with the fish. Um, the build quality of the um, of the knife is pretty good. Uh, if you notice, there's that Schrade Plus there. The plus stands for the type of steel being used. Um, uh, and it was referred to as Schrade Plus Steel. So it's a higher quality stainless steel than the regular Schrade knife. Unfortunately, Schrade doesn't tell you what Schrade Plus Steel was or what their regular surgical stainless steel was. Um, we just know that it is a slightly better quality steel 
than the regular suede steel. The handle um, is for the American version was impregnated, um, resin impregnated um, American oak, and it does have a wonderful color to it. Like I said, the, the finish on the American version is also better. There's a little bit of chamfering going on. You've got the brass pins in here. Um, not the most comfortable knife still because it is kind of squared off and everything. Uh, the bolsters up front, the metal bolsters, they're there to uh, provide support for the, uh, the joint in the front. Um, the blade still has a little bit of wobble, but then again, it is a pretty old knife and it does look from uh, the impression I have on it that it was used by others before I got a hold of it. You do have a lanyard hole on the back. These came with a, um, uh, the, um, the American versions of the knife came with a Cordura nylon sheath. Um, I do not have the sheath for it, but it's just a black Cordura nylon sheath. I also don't have a sheath for the, um, for the uh, Chinese made one. The Chinese made one, um, a little cruder. You've got a sharper edges going around the edges here. You've got um, stainless steel pins instead of brass pins. But overall, the, the build quality is not that bad. Um, blade has a little bit of a wobble. Uh, I'm assuming this is just whatever surgical stainless steel uh, Schrade was using at the time. So something similar to a 440 or maybe a 420 high carbon, something like that. You can see here that this blade could have been longer in the handle. And I think they just uh, put in um, a blade that they had on another um, fillet knife and just dropped it into this handle. Uh, it definitely could have been uh, another quarter inch longer with no problem. In any case, both of them are pretty well made, decent enough knives. You got the finger grooves there, big handle. Um, the problem with uh, folding fillet knives, especially ones with a really long handle, is uh, they're much heavier than a non-folding fillet knife uh, because of all that handle. So. Uh, uh, I think that's why most people would rather have just a regular um, six inch or five inch fillet knife with a regular handle um, and not all that added weight. But in any case, both of them are pretty cool knives. I'm happy to have them in my collection. And this one ended up being my 10th USA made uh, uh, lockback folder that um, I somehow overlooked. In any case, um, I hope uh, you enjoyed this and um, hope you enjoyed the uh, information on the MA5 and the MA6, uh, some of the last knives that uh, Schrade USA made. Maybe they'll come back. Who knows?
let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with the Pious. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.